some tips for you here on how to manage Achilles. Uh, unfortunately, I've learned the hard way with Achilles over the years. Uh, yeah, thwarted many a, a season for me, unfortunately, when, when I was uh, running on the track. But as I say, I've learned, learned a few tips as to how you can manage them because you really don't want to mess with Achilles. As soon as they start to flare up a little bit, then it can literally it can put you out for weeks and months. And, you know, even just walking around, it can be painful and, you know, just not feel very nice. So, I'm going to separate this video into three parts. First of all, what things you can do before you perhaps go out for a run uh, in order to help reduce the chance of it flaring up more and also then after, straight after the run, and then more in terms of like trying to get rid of the problem as well. So, first of all, uh, again, these are just sort of silly things that I've kind of learned. Um, to know through trial and error really. It was generally my left Achilles that would get bad and if I released off my ankle before I ran then that would definitely decrease the pressure going through the Achilles so I just discovered if I did it with this, this is really not sort of very technical or you know anatomical, I just uh, yeah so I discovered it. So I squeeze the inside of the Achilles and then go right up onto the tiptoes, you just kind of release the joint there and then just lower my ankle down like that. And then, sure as day, I get these three or four cracks as I do that. And to me, that just shows that, oh, there we go, things are loosening out. Yeah, it does it even when my Achilles isn't bad. So, um, yeah, and if it's not, if it's proven a bit difficult, then just go a little bit faster and then you should get some nice releases. Uh, similarly, I'm not too sure why, um, but it, a Kyrie once told me that quite often Achilles strains are due to the big toe being a little bit blocked. So all I'm doing here now is just giving that a good wiggle. And yeah, when my Achilles is bad, generally that does crack quite a lot, but it seems to be all right today. So I'm kind of pulling my toe away as well as jiggling it, but also kind of holding it, clamping the toe just underneath the ball of the foot there. So yeah, have a little play with that as well. Okay, so those are just a few little releases, as I say. Uh, I'd also give the calf a, a bit of a stretch, probably normally off the upper step, but just to stretch out the soleus and the gastrocnemius, so bent leg and straight leg. Um, taping <clears throat> is something I would do. I'm not going to go into too much depth about that, like this now because it can cause problems if you don't do it correctly. So I'm sure there's some YouTube videos out there that might show you how to um, tape the Achilles. But effectively, what I'd do is I'd sort of put my ankle in a, in a solid uh, position and then with some tape and then I'd tape up the back of the Achilles with my foot plantar flexed so it's almost like the tape is acting like a bit of an Achilles tendon so that when you come to then flex the foot again there is quite a lot of tension on there but it means that the tape's holding the tension rather than your Achilles and uh, it has really helped um, particularly on sort of track sessions with my own spikes just to take a little bit of the strain off there. Uh, similarly a way of getting rid of some of the strain is just to put some heel raises in you can like buy heel raises from boots or whatever. Uh, you can also um, use things, I know it sounds silly, like just like yellow pages. And I have been away on some training camps before where I've not had anything other than like a bit of paper. And you, you can, as I say, just build it up a little bit and then it just takes that strain off. Um, it's not something you want to necessarily keep in your shoes long term. It's just as an interim measure just to, to allow you to keep running and to keep moving, keep being functional. So uh, yeah, as much as you can, just, just try to sort of keep moving when you do have the Achilles and just use these little things just to help you along the way. Something else that will do that is just taking anti-inflammatories. So I know perhaps some people might not be a fan of that. Um, and again, it's not a long-term thing, but I think if you can get rid of the pain, then it stops you from compensating quite so much if you've got a um pain when you run so because that's just going to cause other problems like if i've had a long-term problem say 
and my left calf and normally my right calf gets like quite a lot stronger um, because I've just been almost limping a little bit as I've been running. So anything that, that stops the pain which like subconsciously makes you compensate then I am all for that but not to become dependent on it just just for you know take it for a few weeks as, as and when you need. So those are the things for before you run then straight after you run I don't know why but it is so so effective to, to ice like literally there's there's such a big difference between when I've iced up and when, I, and when I've not and I've got here just a nice ice pack that I like to use and it just makes it really sort of readily uh, available in, in the freezer it's one of these cool pack ones I just got it off the internet basically but it comes in a nice protective sleeve so you're not going to get an ice burn and then it's also the best thing about it is it, it's got this strap here so it's not like you have to sort of sit with your foot up for ages and, and icing because really you want to ice for in batches of 10 minutes so I can still kind of keep walking around with that on um, and you know it doesn't really inhibit on your day at all so it won't impinge on your day um, yeah so on and off 10 minutes on 10 minutes off uh, just a few times after, after you run and then throughout the day if it's still a little bit sore as well uh, even better than an ice pack, I'll finish off with it now because I'm very lucky in that I live right next to a beautiful river so I have been known on quite a few occasions to after a run either stand or sit in the river and uh, yeah not without strange looks or comments from people passing by but hey ho I'm a runner <laughs> I do strange things <laughs> Um, there we go. And uh, what next? So the oh yeah, and then stretching as well. Uh, as soon as you get back again, just just sort of maintenance stretching at, at that stage because I have heard it's better to wait until you've properly cooled down after you run to, to do the proper stretching, which can then change the structure of the muscles. So cure stage, massage definitely. Okay, I've uh, had some physios that have given me such deep massage it's so painful but it has managed to knock it on the head straight away um if you can't see a physio or masseur then do it yourself okay so i've just got some massage lotion here if you haven't got massage lotion then you can just use olive oil um, yeah, any kind of like moisturizer that kind of thing um but i like this one because it's just got a few sort of uh, herby bits in it that to help nourish the muscle and the collagen and things so no rocket science here like you will be able to feel the knots yourself so just dig in there with your fingers okay you can also use this is one of my mum's tools for when she does massage it's called a wave stone so it's just like a piece of um stone <laughs> that you can use just to work up and down any tight spots and you know as well as going up and down go across as well sideways you see kind of releasing it off nicely in there just helps to realign the fibres and, and stop any adhesions and that sort of thing and um, you can use anti-inflammatory drill as well afterwards if you want that's a sort of a more herbally one that I've got um, so you can just do that while you're watching telly or listening to music yeah um, just to remember to do it, that's the key. Uh, I know I um, mentioned in my last vlog about how I think, so the pain manifests itself in the Achilles, but I had my back cock released off before and it stopped all the pain in my Achilles almost instantaneously. So I think there's definitely a link with back and hip. Now, this tool you can actually use to release your hip as well. You sort of just get in, um, just inside your pelvic bone and then just bend your knee up and then dig in there and you should be able to sort of feel if there's a bit of tightness so when, I know when I'm on the right spot because I get a bit of a release into my glute if I do this so that's a little bit more technical there if you're not if you're not confident with that sort of thing then um, you know don't worry about it too much or, or get a physio or someone to show you um, but definitely because it's the sort of all a chain here back hip right down into there then uh, releasing off up here can really help. Then, 
stretching. Okay, maintenance stretches, 10, 15 seconds. Development stretches, if you've got a problem, then at least a minute, if not more. And like I've just mentioned about the chain, I quite like to do ones that involve the whole chain. So you can do this one here with the, this is just like a little bit of TheraBand, you can use a belt or whatever, but um, just relaxing, lying back, giving everything a chance just to release off wherever it's tight. Okay, so after about a minute, maybe less, you might suddenly start to feel some releases and some changes. Um, that's the straight leg one, bent leg one, in a kneeling position here. I don't know if you can tell, I'm sort of grabbing my foot like that underneath. And then I'm just leaning into this here like that. So I'm putting all my weight down onto my knee, really putting some good pressure stretching releasing. It's quite hard to feel the stretch as you do this one, but it, it definitely does help. And then the uh, final thing is just to do a strengthening program. So you might have heard of eccentrics before, because again, when you get pain in a muscle that's injured, it quite often switches off and then you don't use it effectively. And then you just leave, leave yourself open to more injuries. So definitely just to sort of reactivate <clears throat> the injured um, sore muscle or tendons and uh, just to, to make them stronger if, if they've weakened at all. So an eccentric program basically if you get on a step, if you imagine you're on sort of tiptoes here and then on the injured leg just put all of your weight onto that leg, go down on the step like that and then both together come back up. So release that off, go down, then both feet together come back up. Okay, um, I might sort of <laughs> try and show you that properly. Uh, in another video or photo or something, or put post a link. Um, just uh, yeah, because the the idea is that they're doing it eccentrically, you get um, far better strengthening without um, tightening the muscle as well. It's, it's all a bit complex, but I'm not going to go into it here. So it's better that I just do a separate link to that. I think. Um, so just to finish with a little story as well to hopefully give you a bit of hope because. I, as I say, I struggled a lot with Achilles injuries throughout my career. Now, in 2006, I'd had a bit of a torrid winter. I'd been cross training the whole time. And I went away warm weather training and I, I had actually managed to get in fairly decent shape. And I was surprised by my track times, but my Achilles started to niggle again. And I was told before I went away warm weather training that there'd be physios there and there wasn't. And I was like, Oh my god, my Achilles is sore, I've put in all this hard work, I'm in great shape. I don't want to just throw it all away, you know, another summer of pain and frustration. So I was like, right, come on, Becky, think. What do I know and what can I do with what I've got here? So <laughs> I remembered about how physios had taught me how to tape my Achilles up. I iced. I also just took each session, you know, a session at a time or even a step at a time. Like in the warm up, I was like, yeah, it's sore, but is it stopping me? No. And the very strange thing is as well, sometimes when you run faster on your Achilles, it hurts less. And um, through a combination of the, as I say, the taping, the icing, a bit of self massage, stretching, heel raise as well. Oh, I, I stopped wearing these silly sandals that I had as well, which uh, was probably contributing a little bit. All, all things like that, they all add up. And um, I, I made it through the warm weather training camp, two weeks, and by the end of it, I, I well, my Achilles wasn't sore. And that year, I had my very best year ever on the track. And you know, it could have been such a different story had I just. Um, yeah, basically, to throw the towel in and, and, and spabble me out. Um, so just don't, don't give up, you know, do what you can where you are with what you've got. Great lesson for life. <laughs> okay, I hope that's helped because uh, if you are struggling with Achilles, you have my sympathy. They are brothers. <laughs> but do what you can. Okay, take care, bye. -bye. <laughs>